Hi everybody, my name is Toby Keeping with SWEPT and I'm very excited that you've joined us here for our session today on cleaner turnover and we're going to highlight in today's session, we're going to run about 30 to 40 minutes, somewhere in that kind of time frame. We're going to talk about turnover within your janitorial business. Um, we're going to offer some insights into why it's occurring that might be a little bit different than what you're expecting and we've got some solutions for you to try and uh, you know, implement within your business. We've got some very simple things that you're able to do today, quite frankly. And we're also going to speak to some suggestions on how to actually implement some of those things. So we're looking forward to walking through a bunch of this stuff with you. And I say we because I am joined by Sarah Buston, who is our education lead, who does a whole ton of stuff in terms of providing great content for uh, janitorial owners such as yourselves. Sarah, you want to say hi? Yeah, thanks for that, Toby. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. So, Sarah, do you want to walk through some of the stuff you're going to talk to? Um, I think you've got a survey that you're going to be putting up here in the next minute or as people kind of come in. Do you want to just kind of give them some overview of what you're doing there? Yeah, absolutely. So as um, more people join, I'm just going to launch a quick poll here. It's just a yes or no question. It should be appearing on your screen now, or if not, there might be a bit of a delay, it might take a few seconds, but the question is, is keeping good cleaners one of the biggest challenges you face in your business? Yes or no? So we would love to hear from you, um, and I'll report back on what the numbers are looking like, but uh, we did this webinar this morning as well, and um, we had almost 100% saying yes, and it looks like that's what the results are showing so far. Um, right now as well. So again, if you um, if you can just weigh in there, yes or no, is keeping good cleaners one of the biggest challenges you face in your business? So I'll just leave that up for another 10 seconds. And while I have the floor, um, I just wanna let you know, if you have questions throughout the webinar, I'll be um, keeping an eye on the questions box. Just look for the uh, question mark symbol. I think it's on the right-hand side of your screen. You can post questions there throughout. Um, we don't want you to forget them, so don't don't worry about saving them for the end. Just post as they come up, and we will get through as many as possible at the end. Okay, so we still we have 100% saying yes. Keeping good cleaners is one of their biggest business challenges. So that's it for that poll. Thank you for weighing in. Wow. Okay. So that is awesome, and it, it resonates because this is obviously a subject of extreme importance. Uh, having been a janitorial company ourselves, we know that. Given the fact we've had almost 200 people register for the two sessions that we're holding today on this subject, it is clearly a very uh, prominent issue that people want addressed. So given that, let's dive right in and take you through some of what we're going to talk through today. Again, at the end of the session, we're going to look for your feedback, so certainly stick around. We want to, um, we want to hear from you at the end. Uh, we're going to answer some questions. Um, so again, we're going to run about 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm going to turn my uh, dome headlight off here and get you guys to focus in on the slides. So cleaner turnover explained. Let's start with what is the obvious reason you're here. Sometimes it feels like you've got a revolving door. You hire two cleaners and two cleaners leave the next day. Um, exceptionally frustrating. It doesn't matter if you're commercial or residential. Um, you know, I'm sure every one of you have struggled and thought, like, is it the job? Is being a cleaner just that rife with, you know, that amount of turnover? Are we as a company doing something wrong? Is our management team not supporting these people the way that they should be? You know, is there just, are we just hiring the wrong people? You know, the questions are just confusing. It's a hard issue to, ch to tackle. And, you know, we have also find that a lot of times people just don't have time to tackle this challenge, no matter how big it is within your business. So we, I'm going to start off with some numbers here just to kind of drive home your frustration. Um, you know, there was a survey done a couple of years ago with a company that has about 4,000 cleaners, so a pretty substantial organization. And they surveyed cleaners within that business and found that 78% of the cleaners in that organization felt like slaves. Very, very strong language to be used for sure. And what's probably more telling, more frustrating about this is that of the 78, again, in the same organization, at the same time that the cleaners are telling almost that eight out of 10 of them felt like slaves at times, 50% of the managers felt that their labor management interaction with their team was good. So how distressing is that statistic? 
And again, as I mentioned a moment ago, you know, the report identified that, you know, part of the challenge within this is that the industry, um, it's found that the proper identification of you know turnover within a business is in very st poor stage because most managers are just busy with routine work. You're filling in for a cleaner who didn't show up. You're you're challenged to do payroll on time. You got a client that called with an issue that needs attention. You just got a quote that you've got to go and deliver to a customer. There's all these things pressing on your day and your time that are just hard to focus on something so ethereal as turnover within your business. And like Sarah said, this morning session, all the people who showed up there was about 93% of them said that turnover was their biggest challenge. Um, you know, this afternoon session, again, 100%. So it falls right in line with the 2016 Cleaning Maintenance Magazine survey of BSCs such as yourselves that said 85% this was their number one challenge. So this is clearly an issue that is um, within our industry and one that we have to make changes on because it impacts our business. We did a, a, a BSCAI um, hosted session with Olin Hyde, who is the director of operations for Office Pride. And his calculations throughout his team and their business identifies that it's approximately about $2,000 spent cost when, a, when you have to hire a cleaner from hire, putting out the ad, doing your, 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 um, your interviews, training, all of that stuff. So with every team member you lose, it's a $2,000 cost to your business right away, just on that, not including any lost productivity or other things. But it doesn't have to be that way. It can be better. And as Clean Simple, when we were a janitorial business, we got ours under 10% turnover. Now, I'm not professing that we were the best janitorial company in North America. That is not the case. Um, but we were intentional about trying to drive that number down. We made concerted effort to drive that number as low as possible. And we know of several other organizations who do the same and their results are significantly better than those who are not intentionally trying to make change within their business. So to start this conversation, I empower you to you know, consider that if you're not intentional about this, nothing's gonna change. So by all means, you have to kind of put one foot forward of the other every single day to make this a reality. So Badgeville, uh, we'll speak about a survey they did in 2013. So in 2013, Badgeville, uh, by the way, they are a, a, um, a gamification company, which if that's a new term for you, um, gamification helps um, employees compete with each other in a gaming type environment by which their productivity goes up, their level of kind of team feel, um, they feel more included within their team. It's all about getting more out of employees and helping them stay within their business longer. They did a survey of 1,200 workers and some of the things in here are not really surprising but others are. You know, 88% said praise from the manager was exceptionally rewarding. 83, that recognition for contributions is more fulfilling than rewards and gifts. 76% said the opportunity for growth was the top reason that they stayed within that organization. And if you look in those parentheses, certainly those brackets are really compelling as we enter an age where millennials are becoming the top um, you know, demographic that we have to hire from. They want to see a path to upward mobility. Maybe it's not there as a cleaner, but you need to keep giving them incentives, ways so that they can feel included. Otherwise, their, their attrition rate will be worse than others, potentially. And then lastly, which is somewhat surprising, gifts valued over $1,000 were not the best recognition reward, right? Only 14% said that a gift with a high value was more important to them in their wanting to stay within that organization you know, so 86% said otherwise. Okay, so what I want to do now is kind of take a turn into the three signs that you have a miserable job. Now, this is something, this is a book that um, speaks directly to this. We're going to talk about it as well. But Sarah, I think you've got some other books that uh, everyone on here should, should know about. Do you want to just speak to that as well? 
We do. So our COO, Matt, um, actually wrote a post before he discovered this book, The Three Signs of a Miserable Job. Um, he wrote a post on three books every janitorial business owner should read. So I'm going to post the link to that, um, that post in the chat for everyone. You can check it out after the webinar. And I think what I'm going to do is um, next week take some time to add the three signs of a miserable miserable job to this article so that it's now four books every janitorial business owner should read. But for now, we'll, I'll post that link uh, in the chat so you can take a look. Okay, so everyone on this webinar is getting the three books plus one um, that's not already on our, on our blog post. So that's great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so again, Patrick, the author, speaks about the three signs of a miserable job. And what I'd like you to do, everybody, as you're listening to us describe what these three things are, I want you to really try and put yourself into this, into the space of your team. You know, is there any opportunity by which you see your team can resonate with these three things? You know, I, I you know, again, having been part of a janitorial company ourselves, we recognize that this is, you know, a lot of these things do um, relate very strongly to our industry. So, you know, do pay attention here and, and obviously interested to hear what your thoughts are. So here are the three things. The three signs of having a miserable job is that you're anonymous within that organization. You're, what you do feels irrelevant and your level of success within that organization or within that job can't be measured or it's done within just some very weak constraints that you don't understand. So what I'll do is talk about each of these very specifically using the words of the author, I won't paraphrase. So the author describes anonymity as in this particular component of having a miserable job, the people can't be fulfilled in their work if they're not known. All human beings need to be understood, appreciated for their unique qualities by someone in a position of authority. Now I think all of us, we may not be cleaners anymore, but we can all go back to the days of being 16, and, you know, 15 and getting our first Set, set of jobs doing whatever kind of labor we could find to earn, earn enough money for a Friday night out with friends. Um, you know, you can probably acknowledge that, you know, if you weren't acknowledged by someone, if you weren't asked about who you, uh, what you were trying to do, or if anyone, if nobody cared about you at all, that level of anonymity was certainly a reason that you didn't want to stay within that organization. Second point on the left hand side is irrelevance. Again, from the author, everyone needs to know that their job matters to someone, anyone, without seeing a connection between the work and the satisfaction of another person or group of people, an employee simply will not find lasting fulfillment. Right, so how many of your team feel that what they're doing matters? Are they just pushing a broom? Because I think that everyone in, on this call all 40 or 50 of you would all agree that the idea of just going out to work every day and just pushing a broom is pretty relevant, right? So how do we take that and elevate its importance for the team? Lastly is immeasurement. Employees need to be able to gauge their progress and their level of contribution for themselves. They can't be fulfilled in their work if their success depends on the opinions or whims of another person, right? If you don't know what doing a good job looks like, how can you ever feel that you're doing a good job? If no one ever tells you that you're doing a good job, how do you ever feel that you're doing a good job? You know, if, if those are the components by which you're measured on being successful, or more, worse, maybe there is no measurement of success, certainly those are pretty empty feelings. So what I'd like you to do is just consider, again, going back to when, before we discussed each of these, I think it's pretty consistent for us to look at our industry and for the role that our cleaners fill within our businesses and identify that unless we exert an intentional desire to change each of these three things, that it's not surprising that our cleaners leave, right? If they feel irrelevant and anonymous, and what they're doing isn't measured in any way. That is prototypical. It's the definition of a miserable job, uh, not by me, but certainly by the author of this book. So what we'll do now, we're gonna pivot just a little bit. 
we're going to take these three cornerstones and we're going to talk about them not in terms of you know what what the problem is we're going to start to talk about here are some strategies to kind of take these issues and change the dynamic within your team first is the anonymity one and all of us know that that's a huge challenge we've got teams that work remotely we've got teams that work at one o'clock at night the complete opposite of the time spectrum by which our managers work yeah you may have supervisors in the field and so on but at the end of the day they're your team as well it's hard when you work eight to eight let's call a spade a spade you know to to really keep eye and keep in touch with your team if they're in the field but you have to find a way to invest and be intentional in knowing and supporting your team if the only time you've met cleaner uh, you know Jose if the only time you've met Jose is when he interviewed and it's been six months he likely feels anonymous within your business right one of the things that I would encourage you to do is request feedback from your cleaners more often in fact I'm gonna make the suggestion of what we did we made it a mandatory component by which they were hired so when a cleaner got hired with us they were told you are going to receive a call every so often from our cleaner happiness manager and yes we actually have someone who had that title she was a virtual assistant Tara who's still with us uh, now that we're a software company and her job one of many that she had was one hour a week she made phone calls to three different cleaners for 10 minutes each and each of the cleaners knew that when Tara called you had to talk to her and tell her what was going on tell her about problems you're running into are there issues with your managers are there issues on your customer locations whatever it may be and then Tara summarized all of that and took it to the two business owners again that was a one hour a week task that we outsourced to a virtual assistant that probably cost our business in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty five dollars okay so the next and last piece here is to routinely show public appreciation and feedback yeah pulling your cleaner inside and saying listen that was a great job is absolutely good and um, you know but certainly letting people have uh, be recognized publicly is really important as well and I'm gonna kind of knock on Sarah's door again Sarah you've got a blog post that kind of ties to some of this stuff do you want to just speak a little bit about that as well yeah, absolutely. So we wrote um, a post around common mistakes that managers make when giving feedback to cleaning staff. And I, I won't go through all of them right now. I'll, I'll post a link um, in the chat again. But um, some things to keep in mind are to go into the conversation, making sure that you have all your facts that um, especially when you have to give if you're giving um, negative feedback or constructive feedback, for instance, um, making sure that you know uh, why there's been problems or challenges if there have been, um, making sure that you're not doing all the talking, um, what else, uh, making sure that you're not making them feel vulnerable during those conversations, that sort of thing. So there's some tips on how to um, best conduct those conversations and I'll post that, uh, that blog post now. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. So next slide, we'll keep moving on here. I'm going to show you a slide. So this is a, a video that I'm going to show you. It's about a minute and a half, two minutes long of a customer of ours, Garen Sprave, who owns Clean Slate Janitorial and is just destroying it in Orlando. He's doing really good. And what I want to showcase, I found this, he hit, he put this on his LinkedIn profile um, last week and I saw it. it was, this was just perfect content. So he's giving me permission to use it here. And what I want you to do is just question through this video. Is there any chance if I worked for Garen, is there any chance I would feel anonymous? So we'll just play Garen's video here. I'll take my headset out so you can hear it. So I got a call from one of my business friends who works at a mortgage company here locally in Orlando. And he mentioned to me that one of my employees was applying for a loan. And when he mentioned a name, I got so excited because about 12 months ago, I asked my team to write down their goals. Don't just tell me what it is you want to do. I want you to literally write it down. And some of them followed, some of them didn't. But this one young lady, mother of two, she wrote down her goals and she said that I want to purchase a home within X amount of time. And here I am, nine, 10, 
11 months after receiving a call from someone she doesn't know that I know, stating that she is on the way of home ownership. I oftentimes tell my team, it's not about cleaning. It's about just preparing yourself to follow through on the things that you want out of life. And Clean Slate, we're just the vehicle that helps them to do that. People ask me, why am I in business? And it's for this very reason. Helping people to get from where they are to where they want to be. And along the way, helping us to help our clients get from where they want, where they are to where they want to be. So this idea, this, this concept is blowing my mind because I literally have the book that she wrote in right now in my backpack because I keep it with me because these are the goals. These are the things that remind me of why my team is there. And here we are. It's freaking awesome. I love it. That is why we're in business. That's it. So again, you know, coming back to that question, how many of you, if you worked for Garen, do you feel that there's a good chance that you would feel anonymous in his organization? I certainly don't think I would, right? And some of what Garen talked about in here touches on the next slide that we're going to move to, which is the irrelevance, right? Garen does a really good job, at least in how he's talking about this, is, you know, helping his team understand that it's not just, it's not about cleaning, right? Elevating them to there's a different purpose to what they're doing that is meaningful to their growth as people, helping the customers get from where they want to be, you know, from where they are to where they want to be. So, you know, Garen does a really good job of highlighting that. We know, actually, he's in Orlando as well, Dave Thompson um, at the uh, ACE uh, Academy, uh, ACE Academy, ACE Training Academy, I think it is. Um, and he's, he's trademarked a phrase. Um, I am a janitor, I save lives. So there's lots of different examples out there. Um, if you look at the ISSA value of clean uh, index, I mean, you can attach yourself and tell your cleaners that, listen guys, we don't just clean, we help our customers maintain a healthy work environment so that their staff don't take sick days and we save them thousands and millions of dollars a year. You know, those are the things that give them a different purpose. Obviously, there's a personal purpose, but them understanding what you and your business are trying to accomplish, absolutely essential as well. So, you know, ensure that that kind of messaging is part of your everyday conversation with your team. It's part of your training um, program. You know, make sure you're acknowledging small wins within your team. You know, one year with the company, you know, three months of a cleaner being on site uh, without being late. Um, you know, we used to, we used to always ask our team, can you tell us about problems taking place on site? And, you know, when we started capturing feedback from our cleaners that was preventative, you know, we weren't hearing from customers with issues. We were hearing about things from our team. Man, did that ever make a difference in the customer relationship that we had. So we started offering, you know, rewards to cleaners. You know, the person that told us about the most issues this month got a gift card or you know, when we saved a contract because Jenny told us about this issue in the washroom that we had to go and resolve and, you know, deal with a plumber or whatever it might be, you know, those were things that saved contracts. So we made sure to invest in our team for those things so that they understood that their communication with us had a huge impact on, on our business and that for our customers. So you want to routinely update your team, not just on those things, but, you know, get feedback from your customers. Anytime you get positive feedback from a, from a client, make sure that that gets out to your team. You know, it's all too easy for us to take that feedback from the customer and say, thanks, uh, you know, appreciate that, and not pass it forward. But think of the impact that that can have, right? Just think of the impact that can have if you don't share it, right, versus if you do. And provide ample feedback to your team on their performance and public gratitude for their work. Again, acknowledging a lot of that. And what I think you're seeing here is that, you know, a lot of the pieces that we talk about in one, you know, irrelevance touches on a measurement. You know, you're monitoring things. It's as you're communicating with your team and letting them know that you care and you, you're listening to them, you know, that touches into an anonymity as well. So these are all kind of interconnected. So the last one is when a cleaner doesn't feel that, you know, they understand what success is, 
But how am I successful within AVC janitorial? I, I don't know. I go to work and I clean. That's all I do. Um, you need to define what success is. When a cleaner goes to work, what is it that they're supposed to do that makes them successful? Is it a level of quality? Is it a level of satisfaction from the customer? Is it a level of personal reward that they get from? You know, any number of combination of things. So whatever that success metric is for your client or at the location, you have to define it, you have to you know, measure it and communicate the results with your team. You know, you, they have to know what it is the starting point is, they want to know that you're measuring it, and you, know, you communicate what's coming back to them. So you've got to provide clear instructions at every location so your team knows what it is that they have to do. You want to do regular inspections of the, the environment so that you understand, are we meeting that commitment that we've made to the customer? And am I measuring what my team are doing? Are they being successful? Because if they're not, they need my coaching, right? And then lastly, again, on that coaching side is continue to invest in training so that your team can improve not just the quality of the workmanship that they provide, but that they can grow as individuals and hopefully grow within your organization. As we've talked about all of these, what I'm hoping you've seen, you know, those three cornerstones, they're all tied together in one really powerful way. You know, the foundation for all of this, much like you and your business, and you know, you see the foundation slab here of concrete, you can put your fingerprints on it. It can be made of stone, but you do have an opportunity to put your fingerprints on it and make it yours. And the cornerstone that adds to that, the foundation of this is all communication. Whether it's you know, making your team feel like they're not anonymous, that what they're doing matters, and that you're monitoring and measuring their performance and helping them be successful. You can't do any of that in the absence of communication. Right? You just, you're just not able to. So, you know, be intentional of trying to fix this issue within your business. Be intentional about trying to resolve or reduce the amount of turnover in your business. Make sure it is a strategic item you're working on and focus on how you can better communicate with your team. So in that light, we're going to take a little bit of a spin here and we're going to kind of give you some options to help you do just that. So a couple of good options here, and I'm going to start with one that has nothing to do with communication, but it's probably one of the most important pieces on here because every one of us shows up to work with a busy day and there's always something that catches us. You know, there's a phone call from a client, there's an inspection that went sideways, there's a cleaner who left, there's any number of different things that show up that take you away from your day and schedule. And you may have the best of intentions, to start focusing on cleaner turnover in the for next week or so, and I'm hoping you do, but if you don't put items in your calendar to specifically identify, I need to use this hour for outreach to five cleaners, boom, you'll forget about it. Or something more prominent will fill that void. So first of all, make sure whatever it is you decide to do, again, being intentional, if the first piece of action you need to do is put it in your calendar and make it real. Now, beyond that, if you're old school, um, you never owned a piece of technology, you're scared of it, um, you can still do some of this stuff. There's other tools we'll talk about here in a moment, but yeah, you can put paper in front of your cleaners with the cleaning instructions of what they need to do. You can do your assessments in paper format, have your team call you back and forth using SMS, um, but try and provide some rigor to what you're doing. Define what it is that you think is going to help your team be successful and what's also going to elicit communication backwards. And I'm going to pause for a second because when we say communication, it's really, 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 really important to understand that that's two ways. As managers and owners of businesses, we spend most of our time talking to our staff, telling them what we need, telling them how to do. You need to invest a little bit of time into your team so that they can communicate to you. Because if this whole process is about you communicating down and telling them more information, it's overload. And it does not help anybody not feel anonymous, you know, the cornerstones that we've talked about. So you have to make sure that this is back and forth. So a couple of tools that we'll talk about. Survey tools. You can use Google, which is uh, Google Forms. You can use that. It's free, which is great. 
SurveyMonkey and other survey tools are available as well. You can use those to do surveys to your clients and to your cleaners. So imagine on a monthly basis you're doing surveys with some of your customers, surveys with some of your cleaners, or all of them. You're capturing all this insight from both of the most important cohorts of people in your life, aside from ones that are home. Of course, well, <laughs> you may not want to survey your, your friends and family, but um, for your customers and your cleaners, you can gather feedback from them that will allow you to better understand how you can respond and be proactive on both of their accounts. I have seen customers using Facebook groups where they invite their cleaners to participate in a closed forum whereby they acknowledge birthdays, they acknowledge um, you know, anniversaries, you know, Jenny's been with us for six months, thanks Jenny for doing this awesome work, or Jose picked up three new shifts in the last week and helped us out of a real jam, Jose you're a rock star, here's a five dollar gift card to Dunkin Donuts, you know, appreciate your effort, like whatever it might be, build that community, build that conversation with your team. And again, let them tell you about problems. Last one here is a thing called Slack. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It is free. It is a really good tool. And what it will do is it'll sit on your desktop or your smartphone. And it allows you to communicate with your team based on groups. So you can communicate based on you know, a series of locations or a group of, you know, a team of people. Or I can set up an administration group where we can ask all our questions about HR or payroll or whatever. And all of that can be organized in there. And again, it's free. The last one that I'm going to talk about is industry specific. It is absolutely designed for janitorial and that is of course what we do. Again, we used to be a janitorial company so we understand where you're coming from. That cleaners need to see the instructions by which they have to fulfill every shift. Whether they've been there before or not, they need that information. They need to understand when the problem arises, how do I tell someone about that or I need help. How do I ask for help that doesn't involve three supervisors or ruin someone's inspection because that's what they're doing? Need to be able to do inspections so that the team knows how successful they're being at that location. Be able to communicate with your customers. And lastly, because I don't think anyone on this uh, webinar has a, a homogeneous environment by which everyone speaks one language, I'm guessing most if not all of you have cleaners that are Portuguese, uh, Polish, Spanish, uh, English, you name it. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go into a full product demo. Um, I am going to show you just a couple of things within our product that speak to some of the things we're talking about here. And I'm going to show a very limited view of it. But what I'm going to do is, after we close off the session, we'll hang on for an extra five or ten minutes, and anyone who wants to stick around, we'll dive into a, a little bit broader. Um, but for now, we'll just give you guys a, a quick peek at some of the communication stuff within SWEPT. So this is the manager's version of the mobile application. So again, this is you being an owner, uh, operator within your business. This is the mobile application you're going to get. Now, I'm going to try and touch on this from how a cleaner sees it as well. It looks very similar, so I'll just kind of navigate as best I can here. So I'm going to go to the locations in the top left corner. And I'm going to go there because this is where we start as a cleaner. So a cleaner will see a lot of this when they get to a location, so they can sign in, sign out. But as we're talking about making sure your team understand what's expected of them, the cleaning instructions at the very bottom allows you to give your team the very clear details of what it is that they need to do at this location. Okay. Now, this is also going to translate into any language using Google Translate. So if your cleaner speaks Spanish, they're going to see this in Spanish. Okay, so they know what to do. When they run into a problem, they can order supplies whatever it may be, right? And I'm going to go back to being a manager here. Let's assume we just cleaned a facility yesterday for an office that had a, a big party the night before. And our team put in a lot of effort. They worked an extra couple of hours last night. And I go through and I'm doing a walkthrough just to make sure everything looks okay. I stumble across the office manager's desk who's you know maybe a little hungover after the office party. And she's left us a note. Right, so I see this note, I click on my messages. What I want to do is, she's left us a note on the desk. I'm going to attach a photo and I'm going to send this off to my team. Right, so thanks for a great job. You know, Melissa shared some information. 
I capture this, I share this with my team, I put in a couple of comments here, great job guys, thanks so much. Now again, very quick, very easy way to communicate that level of success with your team, you know, helping them appreciate that their impact is truly there. What they did mattered to someone, right? So I'll go back another step here. So let's go back. So within the product here, we do have as a manager the ability to do an inspection, right? I'm not going to do a full inspection, but what I just want to highlight here is when you open up an inspection, when you're finished, you have the opportunity to share it with your cleaners, right? Give them a copy of the report, type them a quick email here. This will send that off to the cleaners so they understand where they need to improve or what they need to do better. You can also use that message board to do the same thing. Okay, one of the last pieces I'm just going to showcase here for just a, a quick second is that you can see all of the messages on your location messages. Everything is organized by location. So you don't get 200 text messages from Steve and you don't know where he is. It's all organized by the location. But the one that's really interesting here is that when a cleaner signs out of a shift, Jane signed out last night and told me there was a problem, right? She wrote it in Spanish, translates into English for me. I now can communicate that to my client. And like I mentioned earlier, that communication with my team allowed us to get ahead of losing contracts. We saved so many contracts because the cleaners were empowered to tell us about a problem. And that's a huge pivot because a lot of our cleaners used to be worried about their jobs. They didn't want to tell us about problems because they were fearful they were going to be unemployed if they did, right? So that's a couple of the pieces that I wanted to showcase for you. So let me just dive Toby, back if in. I could interrupt before you get out of the app. Absolutely. I was thinking it might um, also make sense. I don't know if you would plan to do this later, but to show the mood reports. Oh, great. Thank you. Yes, Sarah. Perfect. Why I'm here. <laughs> now your brain's behind all of this. Um, so what I can do down in the bottom left corner, if I look at my cleaner, I can go to any of these cleaners, by the way, but this will take me to Jane Smith, for example. And Jane, I can see her profile here. Once a week when Jane signs out of a shift, our software is going to ask, hey, Jane, how do you feel about cleaning this week? And it'll show itself in the mood history. And if Jane reports a sad face, I can get an alert on that. So again, if retention is key, Knowing that a cleaner told you they got a sad face on October 25th, I'm hoping that the reason she has a happy face on the 31st is because someone on my team called her on the 25th and figured out what the problem was and we resolved that problem, right? But nobody does that today. So communication is the key by which you help your team not feel anonymous, feel that they're meaningful and contributing to your business and to their own personal lives and that of your customers and that they understand what success is, do, is within their job. And that concludes the live content portion of the webinar that was originally recorded. At this point, we hope you've gotten some value out of the content that was presented to you. You have some takeaways for you and your business as you kind of move forward. We do hope and trust that you found the SWEPT platform to offer you a lot of different opportunities to affect uh, turnover within your business. So we want to leave you with two very valuable uh, pieces of information here. One is the hiring guide, which is available on our website for free. Uh, it includes a number of different um, uh, templates for interview questions and kind of scoring people as you do your interview. It includes a link out to cleaning jobs uh, and a couple of other resources that I hope you check out. And secondly is, of course, if you do believe, as we do, that um, more effective communication with your staff has a direct correlation into higher levels of retention, then you want to book a demo with us. Uh, I invite you to go to the swepworks.com forward slash request a demo link where if you subscribe um, for a product demonstration we will offer you a $50 credit to your account if you purchase the product we recognize that it's hard to find time for sessions like this and product demonstrations so uh, as a um, as a gift if you will 
for attending a session uh, where we will show you the product. Uh, we will give you a $50 credit on your account. So once again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, download this content, and we hope that it's been beneficial to you and your business, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. And again, all the best.